All right, welcome back. This is round seven for Germany. I'm uh, still in pretty dire straits, although he did move some of his Russian stuff down to India to defend. Um, and USA kind of read this here correctly that I was going to Brazil and threw four subs and a destroyer uh, in the eastern United States here. I could do this still and take this, but uh, he's just going to kill me. And I'd lose uh, this fleet, which if I pair it with this fleet, might actually be okay. So I'm going to change gears and move this way and just capture some IPCs on, on the way. But that's for Japan's turn. So Germany, I'm like the yin and yang in this game. I absolutely love my Japan uh, situation on the board. I absolutely hate my Germany situation on the board. Well, the other thing he did, he did actually attack Ukraine with 26 guys from Russia. And I actually only lost five guys and he lost six. So that worked out for my defense here. Um, but I'm in a tremendously bad position here. Because I just don't have enough uh, offensive stuff here to make a push to counterpunch anything he's doing here. But one thing this this did, he spent uh, 32 IPCs uh, on his sea power here, which means he didn't spend another uh, bunch of money on landing troops. So he's going to be at least one turn behind now landing troops. So that's going to be give me a little bit of a reprieve, even though England is still building, and he has total domination of the Atlantic here. So, and I have absolutely nothing, and I'm hemorrhaging IPCs. So, I'm going to do an, I'm going to fall back again. We're going to fall back out of Ukraine, fall back out of Bello, snatch Baltic on the way there. We're going to use one guy to take Northwest Europe and use a couple guys in the plains to take France. And then, um, just to get our IPCs, and then we're going to stack Poland with a bunch of stuff. And if he moves into Ukraine light, we'll just steal it back. And as we build troops here, if he steals it heavy or takes it heavy, then we can decide if we want to bum rush him with our 15 tanks and 20 guys. So, but in the meantime, we're going to lose these four uh, by pulling back. We keep trading France, but he just keeps getting money. United Kingdom has just a ton of money. I mean, they're they're have way more money than they should have right now. I got to do something about that, which my plan is probably to go take Africa. After I bounce here, I, I got a decision to make, obviously, after UK's turn, if we're going to take India or not. And then if we, and then move our way into Africa. So we'll see how that goes. But right now we're on Germany's turn, so let's do Germany. Uh, we're just going to buy 10 guys. All right. So for combat, we are going to take one guy and take that. We're going to take two guys and the four fighters and try to take France back. Only risk in this is that if they do manage to get two hits... Uh, we won't take it, which would really suck, because we'd really like that those extra IPCs for next turn. We're going to take the tanks, blitz here, and then go to Poland. We're going to fall back to Poland. Oh, no, we can't do that yet, because it's a combat move. We could take one more, but I don't want to waste the guy if I don't have to. I think that's all we're going to do. I wish we had a bomber. I should have bought a bomber early because then I could start bombing some of these transports that are just sitting out here with 
with nothing. But I don't have one, so that's kind of useless. So let's do this. I thought about taking this, but then I'm just wasting guys, and I'm going to need it to counter punch. We got really lucky on that one. All right. So for the non-combat move, four planes go back there. And I aircraft there, five guys there. All right, let's see here. Hold on, let me do this. Okay, so this is 12, right? So that's 12. So that leaves 15. So let's put five guys there. So we'll have 20. Also, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to drop one tank. The reason we're going to drop one tank here is that if we have a situation like we had last time where Northwest um, had no troops in it, but it was occupied by them, I'm just going to use the tank to steal it back uh, without losing this guy here. Because basically we're going to give this guy up. I don't want to lose any more guys if I don't have to. Guys are going to be precious now. Infantry are going to be precious uh, for as long as we can hold out. So we're going to have a decent stack here in Poland. We're going to have 27 guys and four planes in Germany. And then next round, I think, with the income, which is like 34, I'm going to buy eight, um, eight artilleries. So then we'll have uh, a significant counter punch. So, or maybe even a plane or two. We'll have to see. But most likely, eight artilleries. That's going to do it for Germany. Uh, well, let's mobilize. See what we got here. We got lucky in France. This is going to look really bad. So we are just giving up Europe. Giving it up. So he can take this and even take this one and this one. Go down here. He can take a lot of stuff here. But if that's the case, we can just take it back, so... We'll see what he does here. And if he takes this strong, um, if he takes it strong, we can counterpunch it. So that's it for Germany. Germany sucks right now. Uh, we're just kind of hanging on by a string. So we'll see if we can do anything with Japan. This The game is coming down to a couple of uh, big battles. Uh, we thought we might have one in, in the Caucasus, but we're not this turn. Uh, we're, we could have one in India, depending on what UK does next. And I think I might have to take India back. I mean, take India just because I've got to have him divert something down here, but... Maybe I, he doesn't have to, because he's already got 14 guys here, which is a pretty decent stack. I guess, I'm going to assume he's going to take Kazakh back with UK, because if he doesn't, I can drop um, a significant amount of stuff here and my five, my five planes. So my five planes go one, two, three, four, and land here. One, two, three, four. So I'll get five planes I can s stack there after the India attack. Um, and I'll probably lose them all. That might not be bad for him because he could probably take with the nine artilleries. This is a this is a little pivotal spot here because he can attack Kazakh with everything from these two territories. So, all right, I've rambled on too much. That's going to do it for. Germany's round seven. Mannix is up next for UK's round seven, and I'll see you back for Japan in round seven. Okay, jumping on for round seven UK, and the probable defense of uh, 
India. I've done the calculations for this. If I build three fighters, I'm going to get about 80% odds to hold, which is great, to be honest. I don't think that's going to be a, an attack. Now, I have calculated that the anti air gun takes the hit first. So if Cobra doesn't calculate that, it won't make much of a difference, but it might. I'm not sure what that, what would that change to, actually. Save. If you do like second last, then. Yeah, it drops off 5%, so it, he's got a best, if he's calculating it right, 25% chance to take it, so not good attack. But if he goes for it, for me, that's probably a good thing, because obviously we can clear out a lot of Japanese troops. And meanwhile, we're obviously having very little pressure against Russia. I'm thinking this round of trying to we'll, we'll grab everything we can, I think, in Europe. Actually, the UK can do an absolute crap ton of trades here. They can take Baltic, Belarus, Ukraine, Northwestern and France all in one round here which is really nice and then I think we're going to try and I'll move the majority of the troops down I think just to kind of because Persia's a nice I think we don't need to necessarily be this far forward as well with the, uh, the UK troops it helps with Germany but and I think we, we, we had to for a second because we were, we were um, stacking a few zones but yeah from, from Persia you can dead zone Kazakh with the UK um, and then Russia can just deal with Novo I'm just thinking about these Japanese troops. And at the moment, they're not really getting reinforced, so actually we've got massive odds to, to kill them off if they come forward, so we can afford to push forward a bit with uh, with our Russian troops here. Um, but yeah, the Germans have backed off to Poland, which is nice, so again, we've, we've got all this free to, to trade, which is great. Um, and yeah, we'll, just, we'll pull the majority back. But anyway, I've gone for three fighters, because that gives us the 80% 8, 8 odds. And we've gone for as many infantry as we can fit in the UK. Because <laughs> we're not going to have a full transport. We'll have we'll have almost three. Well, technically three if we use the anti-air gun. If we can do two attacks, then we can reinforce with the anti-air gun somewhere. So, not too bad. And we should be getting a nice little payday next round as well. With all these UK takes, so that's good. Uh, so, we'll take this on the way. With all our planes down there. Uh, let's grab this, this. Grab this, uh, we'll do one, two here. Into, in, to be fair, we could actually leave some infantry here for next round. One, two, one, two. Uh, I'm gonna hmm. do this. I probably could use my bomber for trading this round. I'm not, I'm not gonna go for a strategic bomb just because we're a bit short of troops. I'm gonna save these two, I think, for next round. So we're not quite as weak. So we've got four going for against the one here, so that should be fine. Three here with a reliable hitter at the back. Um, trading all these, moving everything down. And we'll fly obviously these planes down as well. I'm gonna also, oh, I, don't, I, don't need to. I don't need to. I was, I was thinking of putting the sub in 35. I know it, it does nothing, but it can be annoying to avoid sometimes. You, it can cause, a, if you leave subs within the fleet, they have to do a few clicks and it can cause some <laughs> annoyances when you're trying to navigate your fleet you have to do a few things differently when the subs present but I don't if, if it was time set I might do that just to kind of see if I could cause some confusion there in the, in the landings uh, but since we've got 80% I'm not too worried I'll, I'll keep the sub safe I might just tail these guys just follow, follow them <laughs> just keep an eye on them and see if we can get any value um, one thing I did realise I made a big mistake was not moving these six troops to central because they could have been reinforcing, they could have been picked up by these transports next round, or this round rather, um, because there was no immediate threat to uh, West United States. If the Japanese doubled back and went for it, they could we could just just move back. So to put them, to not put them here was a big mistake, that's just sloppy because they, they had potential to get picked up and we could have rebuilt some more if we needed to later on. So it's, yeah, that's, that's bad play. Because now these five trends was completely useless for a round or two. Well, yeah, two rounds really. But not good. Anyway, um, that's probably everything we want to do. Fingers crossed we get these two, particularly France, obviously. I'd like to give the Germans as many trades as possible. And yeah, I think that should do it. So let's go. So. Nice, right, let's pull everything down. Let's put everything back in here. Fly you guys. Oop. I panicked for a second then. I thought, hang on, where's my planes? I thought I used them for a fight now. 
They're just up there. Um, can we tell these guys? At a distance, I suppose we can. 38 is not a bad zone, so we can hit 36 if we want to. We'll still hit 35. Uh, let's put you back in the fleet, put you back in the UK. So we set up a little stack in um, West Russia with the transports back. So yeah, we'll probably move in with everything here. The entire, the entire load of uh, Americans and a lot of Russians as well. As long as we've got a clear chance to dead zone with these guys. I think, we'll, yeah, we'll try and push forward with the, the whole Allied force into West Russia this round. And then we'll see if we can progress to maybe Belarus the following round and then try and keep the push going as long as we can. We might, it'll be slow progress, but cause there is a lot of, uh, there is actually quite a lot of German infantry there. We've got 47, 15 tanks. The only weak thing at the moment is their aircraft, really. They've got very few aircraft, for Germany at least. Uh, right. That's more than secure. India's looking good. This. Yeah, good place for the Australian infantry as well. Nice, okay. Looking good. Obviously, India next round is also completely guaranteed because we've got, what, 15 units bordering with also more fires on the way, so yeah. Not a issue. Nice payday, 45 for the UK, that's what you like to see. And actually it worked out really nicely because we've got four transports and we've got technically eight units, so that actually worked out perfect. So we can do three attacks and reinforce them one if we want to. Nice. I'd like to maintain the bombing runs if I can with the UK. Um, it, it made sense that this particular round to not do that, but generally speaking we want to be bombing as much as we can. But yeah, UK economy after that, very nice. So how are we looking overall? Two, two, sorry, 277, 238, healthy lead now, which is nice. Um, the UK are currently my strongest power, which is, which is quite nice. Almost as strong as Germany, which is also interesting. Um, but yeah, they, they have got a crap ton of fighters in uh, India. It's not ideal to put fighters there, but I think just to get odds for one round, it's completely fine. Because these fighters are so valuable. That's the, they'll be so useful for the rest of the game, so having them there, is, I don't mind at all. We've got a good load of infantry coming back, so... Yeah, I think India should be... As long as we can hold the 80% if he goes for it, which is, again, there's no guarantee of that, but still, if we can hold, then it's going to be, uh, we're going to be in good shape, I think. As I mentioned before as well, there's very little follow-up from this, if he, go, if he doesn't go for the attack here, then there's no real follow-up. All he can bring extra next round is two more land units and two fighters, maybe even four. But even then, we're going to have, as I said, 15 more <laughs> coming in plus some an extra fighter if we want to. So yeah, we hold this round, India won't we won't lose India at all. We can pressure properly here. I'm enjoying the free reign I think with Russia as well at the moment because again we've, we've dead zoned wherever Japan could possibly push into. So Japan have got no options here apart from light trading. So Russia's nice and secure. We've got a fair spare 24 we can put in West Russia this round as well. So yeah, make a nice front against Germany. So all things are looking fairly good, I think. Back to uh, back to Cobra. All right, welcome back. This is round seven for Japan. So, Mannix has thrown a hell of a defense in India. So at this time, right now, if I take all of my stuff that I can possibly take into India, I have a thirty percent chance. Between a 28 and 30% chance of taking it. He's got like a 70% chance to defend. Now, I'm all for taking risks. But if I lose this battle, which is a good likelihood, I'm only winning it 3 out of 10. Uh, that probably is going to end the game because Germany needs some help. So, I have opted not to do that. I'm not going to take India this turn or even attempt it. The other thing is, is I think we talked about it last uh, Germany's turn. We dropped down here, so hoping to take Brazil, but he countered with uh, four subs and a destroyer right there, so that kind of puts our Brazil gambit 
kind of out of reach. So uh, one thing we're going to do is we're going to just play slow. So we're going to take New Zealand. That'll be free. And then we're going to take, we're going to see if we can take um, either Kazakh or maybe even Volgata or Vologda, however you say that. So I can use this bomber here to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and drop the bomber back here in Sinkang, which we might do. So we're going to try to take Vologda with one guy and a bomber. And then we're going to uh, our purchase. And our setup is going to give us a couple of different opportunities. So for starters, we have 42 uh, monies. So we are going to buy... Uh, four sets of infantry and artillery to fill our transports here. We already have one set here, and we're going to buy a bomber. All right. Now the combat move. We're dropping those guys in there, and we'll take the battleship and bombard. Take the cruiser and bombard just to move them over there during the combat move turn. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so. Alright. And then the other move we're going to do. We're going to take one guy and the bomber. All right. That's all we're going to do for combat. Okay. So let's do it. All right. For the non-combat move, the bomber's going to go back here to Sing Kang. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. We are going to stack Burma. All right, we're stacking Burma. We're going to move the aircraft carrier, the two planes, and the destroyer. Actually, hang on. Our two planes went to fly to New Guinea. The reason we're going to fly our two planes in New Guinea is because next turn... We can send those two planes to Burma if we have to. And the battleship, cruiser, aircraft carrier, and destroyer should be able to handle this submarine if the submarine decides to attack. So, that's going to be protected there, and I want to be able to have the option to put the planes here uh, if need be. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take these five transports and drop them into C-Zone 60 along with the destroyer and the battleship and the aircraft carrier. Because we are going to mobilize Ooh. Okay, we're going to be safe. I just want to make sure. So these planes here, can I go one, two, three? 
Can't land anywhere. One, two, three. They can't land anywhere. So I'm going to drop a bomber in here in Quang Tung. I don't want to leave it by, by itself because if there's a bomber that can attack it, uh, that would really suck because four, uh, a four hit against a one hit um, is no bueno. So since he doesn't have a bomber there, we should be okay to put the bomber there by itself because we're going to put four sets of infantry and artillery right here. So, all right, I think that's all for my moves. Right? Right, okay. All right. So, he can do... I don't see why he would do that. He could do this guy here, these two tanks... And then the 10 planes that he put in India, he could try to take Sin Kang with it or strafe it. But with 13 rolls at two and a bomber, I'm bound to get some hits. And does he really want to lose some planes and have the planes stuck up here for the next turn where I can then bum rush uh, India? So this 17 fighter defense is fantastic. Um, I'd love to keep these 17 these fighters stuck here and doing nothing else. So that's what this stack is meant to do, is to keep them there so they can't really do anything else. My plan is eventually, we're just going to slow play. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this. We may uh, try to hop over here to uh, French Madagascar. Um, I don't know. So here's the other thing. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's go to the end of the turn because I think that's it. So Malagda, Sinkang, uh, Burma, 15, 6, 6, and 8. Is there anything else I can put in there? Nothing in Yunnan, C-Zone 61, nothing. Japan will have... Okay... All right. All right. So mobilization. I'm going to put the bomber in Quang Tung. We're going to put the four infantry in Japan and the four artillery in Japan. So here's the thing with this. Here's the thing with this. So now we have a significant invasion force here. If we want to then do the ever unpopular Alaska gambit, I can drop the guys in Alaska. Five and five. That's pretty good force. He'll have to move, so I anticipate he's probably going to buy some stuff here. Um, but we'll see. The other thing I can do is I can take these five guys and these five artilleries, bounce them down here, and put them in Burma. But I probably won't because this air... This defense, this air defense I have from the sea, is no match for 10 fighters. So we're probably not going to do that. But what we could do is drop them all in Yunnan, and then we have options with that. We can either move them into Burma, or we can start moving them, which is more likely, moving them through Szechuan up to uh, meet up with the Sinkang forces here. Or we can simply moved over to C-Zone 61 and drop them. You know, we can drop them in Kuang Tung. I wouldn't want to drop them in uh, Shanghai or Kiangsu because they'll take more turns to get over here. We could drop them in, in Kuang Tung or we could drop them, heck, we could drop them up here in, in Barry and have them start moving this way to put more of a squeeze. But this was a good defense here by Mannix, so... Right now, for this, we're not going to worry about trying to take Brazil. Um, we're going to just start moving here, slow, slow moving, and then uh, obviously we got to be careful of this air to air power here now. So that's going to be the end of Japan's round seven. Manix is up next for United States' is round seven, and then I will see you guys back for round eight. 
Okay, US 7. So, the Japanese are posturing right now like they're going to take Alaska, which I hope doesn't happen purely for the sake I think it would be a worse game if it does happen. So I won't have as much problem dealing with Japan in Asia. Um, and plus I've already got some ground troops prepared, so the best he's going to do is a prolonged, you know, occupation of Alaska, but that's going to be at the sacrifice of the entire pressure against Moscow for a number of rounds, so this is a, a not a good move. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen, um, just, just for the sake of the game. Um, but there is, I think th these were in 44 or 43 maybe, I would be more thinking about, he may, he may move later on. Um, but right now I think it's more likely my uh, cause he didn't have the full numbers so I think he may, he may have just moved back just to because why not um, he may ship these back into uh, to Burma possibly next round uh, but it's more likely my Australian stack is going to die unfortunately I can't really do much about defending them but they they will die obviously if the Japanese decide to come for them um, but anyway so we're going to try and fix our logistics this round <laughs> yeah, 14 infantry I'm going to move these guys out because I can move them back in if I need to. Um, there's no immediate threat against Western just yet, so I might as well move them out and possibly give them the option to go with the logistics next time. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, combat move. Not actually anything we can do with the US this round. It will just get into position. Oh, excuse me, we're just woken up. So, um, yeah, that's all, and nothing has moved, <laughs> gets to the non-com. So, uh, subs and destroyer will go through the uh, Panama Canal, because I want to be a least yeah, I, I said to you, uh, Cobra in the Discord, to justify the purchase of that fleet, I have to kind of make use of it in the Pacific somehow, to try and pressure Japan a little bit, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to send it immediately through there, and just try and get some value from it even though it's going to be very hard but we'll try and somehow regroup it with this sub here try and get them together so we've got five subs which is no, you know, that's a decent force of subs combined with the uh, the UK one as well it's pretty decent anyway let's get this these five transports back, I'm going to understack a five set of transports everything moves forward, I'm going to put the battleship um, there is no immediate danger. There's, the, uh, there's a bomber in Xinjiang that can reach season three, provided it's got a landing spot in Northwestern. So if Germany takes back Northwestern, there is a danger against these transports. Um, obviously, the UK can retake before Japan has a go. However, if I was for somehow got terrible dice and couldn't take this back, um, Japan would have a snipe of a lot of transports. So I'm going to put a battleship up in three, just as a bit of an insurance policy in case something bad happens in Northwestern. Uh, I don't need all these, these, uh, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, I'm going to pull everything back, pull everything back, except the fires. This is definitely not in range, is it? They're not in range. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's a bit more fleet here than I would have. Actually, I really need because there's only four four attacking fires, which won't get used in the fleet. I'm almost sure. Despite even possibly even above fifty percent, it's just so dangerous because Germany loses so much power immediately. So for now, we're going to have yeah one, two, three Americans plus more. So this this safe is entirely fleet. The battleships are there, so that those transports are safe, most likely. That'll be a ballsy attack to go for a bomber there, I think. Um, so yeah, we're just getting things in position. A fair amount of infantry next round. Um, there's still a danger here. Obviously, there's still a quite a significant force sitting in um, in Burma, so I can't ignore this. So I'm gonna have to pull back pretty much, pretty much everything. I think I'll pull back everything because it frees up my other nations to move out. Um, so it's better just to have a, a stronger UK and having. As few nations in here as possible is a good thing. So I'll try and move the Russian tanks out and the planes to help out with the, the Japanese front and leave just probably a contingent of US and UK forces here. So we'll try and free up the uh, the Russians. We don't necessarily need these guys to dead zone Kazakh because dead 
because it's already dead zone by the Russians alone because there's no more there's no more troops flying up from Japan so just yet anyway so yeah I can freely move these guys back to India just to help out and these tanks as well okay that should do it for the UK uh, US move I think we're okay um, no planes in oh yeah no planes range 19 One, two, three, four. they wouldn't have been range anyway cool uh, right, let's go. So, end of round seven. 291 attack power for the Allies, 256 for the Axis. On to Russia, round eight. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna have a couple, couple more there. Let's throw, them, let's throw them in there, four and two. Uh, attacking moves. So 909 range. Just do take that as lightly as we can. A bit risky, but we'll do that. And I think we'll probably move the entire 24 stack into West Russia. Oh, did I? No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I thought, I thought I forgot to move something. No, we're fine. Yeah, I'll move the entire 24 stack into West Russia. So Germany's got a bit more of an uncomfortable time moving in anywhere hard. I don't think they can. They can move obviously into the Baltic states comfortably, but Belarusia and Ukraine, I don't think they can. We've got 27, 28, 29, one, two, three. Ukraine's definitely uncomfortable. I'm just thinking about a one two punch here. Yeah, Ukraine's in comfortable. Belarus is possible, because again, I've got a large stack of infantry. It's not really supported by a lot of aircraft. At least aircraft that are in range. Uh, again, I want to try and free up these fighters as, as soon as possible. But for now, yeah, we're just sort of, we're just stacking West Russia. So we'll see what Germany does. They may go for some, they may go for a stack forward, but we'll see. But for now, it's just, this is all can do in Russia, I think. Fingers crossed we get the trade. Uh, if I don't get... If my infantry lands, if these infantry lands are here, I might just pull out, I think. So I don't really want to risk. I don't like 50 50s. Oh, that's nice. Alright, so let's pull everything back. We'll leave we'll leave defenders around here. Uh, let's pull you guys back. As with the tanks. So yeah, I've, I've calc this without obviously the Russian defenders were still completely fine, so no problem pulling those guys out. The tanks give us some nice hitting power as well on a lot of these things. Uh, should be need to, so get them far more valuable into the Caucasus right now. Wouldn't mind a few more artilleries in the Caucasus, but what can he actually bring to? No, bro, he can bring one, two, three, just 15 units. Move a few out. I'm gonna have two more there. So we're gonna have four. Yeah. I think just probably just deploy everything into Russia itself. Yeah, that's a bit more meaty for the Russians. Six six artillery is gonna help out a lot against. Uh, I'm just trying to deter Germany from moving forward permanently, or just I mean as a, as a big stack as opposed to just trading lightly. I much prefer them just to trade and sit back where they are, so I can you know. Trade for more income. Let's try that. And everything else here. So we've still got 21, um, 24, 26 against a potential 15 stack from the Japanese. That's dead zoned. And then on the flip side, this looks so weird. Look at this. That is clearly over the border. <laughs> those those six artillery. <laughs> clearly on, on Moscow turf, but no, it's actually much Russia. But I guess they can't, they can't really. I see how they design this game. They, they put them in lines, so they, they could probably design it so that the UK infantry's further, the UK artillery's further this side, so it looks more realistic. But this is a bit. But we know what's in there, so that's fine. If you're paying attention, you can obviously see the difference. But it just looks looks weird at a glance. You never know, it might work out in a favour. That that, that's probably happened sometimes. People have 
you know, not seen something in their territory like that. I think I've missed I've missed anti air guns before in the Baltic states because they they can they can sit very close to the border here. Sometimes a bit over here, it looks like they're not actually in the Baltic states. So I've attacked not known as an anti air gun there. So he may move forward thinking there's no artillery in West Russia, but who knows? Anyway, that's my that's my Russia ape. I think we're looking good. Freed up some troops now. Russian troops to get back to the, the main fight up here. India's safe. I'm just curious what Japan's doing. That's my main my main thinking at the moment. Uh, Alaska could be threatened. I don't want that because it, it obviously throws off my logistics. Again, I've got to. I will have to react to it. Obviously, I've got to pull back all my infantry and that kind of stuff. So it is a big distraction for the U.S. But I think, given the state of Europe right now, it won't concern me too much because we've already got. A, you know, a healthy number of US troops in, in Europe and Russia and UK are having a, a nice time income-wise. So, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, back to uh, Cobra.